everybody. Today's project, we are going to be making something called a water whistle. So the materials we're gonna need is a, a cup or a glass of water filled about three quarters of the way up or three fourths full, a straw and a pair of scissors. Uh, paper and tape are optional and I'll show you why in a minute. If you can't get your straw to work properly, there's a way we can fix it to make this uh, project work. So what we're going to do is in your straw, let me move my water. So with the straw, you're going to want to cut it about a third of the way down. Now mine happens to be a bendy straw, but it's still going to work. So you're going to cut it, but you don't want to cut it all the way through. You want to cut it almost all the way through, but leave a tiny little piece attached so that the straw is still attached a little. So I cut through, but not all the way. Um, just enough so that it's still attached. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna bend your straw to a 90 degree angle. So 90 degrees is like this, where you make that nice, perfect square corner. So the paper and the tape, where this comes into play. So to do this, it'll work even if your straw isn't gonna stay bent, but if you like that sound, you can take a strip of paper, which I did here, and I made a triangle. So I took the corner and I folded it up to meet the other side. And then I folded that up and you wanna keep that triangle shape. And my paper is not cut perfectly, but I'm just gonna keep folding. Then if you have tape, you can tape it here. So now you have a triangle of paper that you then could tape to your straw so that your straw stays bent at that 90 degrees. I'm not gonna use it for this video, but you can if you want your, your straw to stay at that angle. So I'm just gonna put that aside. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is have your water or your cup filled with water, and you're gonna put the long part of the straw into the water. Now, in the other video, we talked about variables, things you can change with the leaf glider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a whistling sound with your straw in the water. So it depends how far down you put your straw in the water as to what kind of sound you're gonna create. So when you're pushing your straw into the water, you're changing the amount of air that's in the straw and the amount of water. So the further down you push it, the more water and the less air you have. If you pull it up higher, you have a lot more air space in the bottom of your straw as compared to water. So those things that you can change, those variables will make a difference as to what sound your whistle is going to make. So keeping your straw roughly at a 90 degree angle, mine's gonna move a little bit. You're, gonna, you're going to want to blow into the straw. Now I'm gonna try this, but I'm not really sure if you're gonna be able to hear it. So it's a very light sound that it is creating, but it is working. It is making a, a light whistling sound. Um, so you can get either a high pitch or a low pitch. And again, it depends on how much air and how much water you have inside your straw. So once you do get um, a whistling sound coming from your straw, you can um, change the variable. So you can try the sound when you don't have a lot of water in your straw. It's a much lower sound as compared to when you put your straw way down into your cup so you have a lot more water and less air, it is definitely a higher pitch. So the more air space you have, the sound waves, those vibrations that are inside the air, that's what's making the noise. You have a lot of air space. The vibration is a longer sound wave. And I'm gonna use this piece of paper here to demonstrate that. So if, here, if your straw is here, I'm just gonna do this, and you have a lot of air, the sound waves are very long and spread out like this. So it causes a very low pitch. If we do the other way, and here's your straw, and you have a lot of water here, those vibrations only have a small space to move around in. So they're much closer together like this. So this, a little bit of air space, will cause a much higher pitch than the other way around and a lower pitch. So the more space you have, the lower the pitch. So you can continue um, experimenting and seeing 
the different pitches you can make. Uh, maybe you want to see if your straws close a little bit as compared to open and keep uh, experimenting with that to see what kind of sound you can make. It's pretty interesting to see how simple this is, but it really does make a difference about how far in the water that your straw is. Um, the other thing we want to talk about today is how this relates to maybe some of us and we think about what we might want to do when we grow up. So a lot of us like to play video games and there are people that have jobs and they're called sound designers and they um, create all the sounds that you hear in a video game and they work with voice actors. So these are actually people who just use their voice in the video game. You don't actually see them, but to make sure that your game sounds good and that the sound effects are really good. Um, the other thing, sound engineer technicians, they also add sound effects to movies. So when you're watching a, an action movie and all those bangs and um, loud sounds, they have to make sure everything sounds just right. They don't want background noise to be too loud or you won't hear the, the characters talking, you won't hear the dialogue. Um, also, if you've ever been to New York City to see a Broadway show, there are people that work there to make sure that they have microphones attached appropriately so that we can hear them. Um, they mix different soundtracks to get new music for, for different clubs um, and also for music that you listen to all the time. So all these popular musicians, they have a lot of sound people working with them to make sure their concerts, uh, that the audience is hearing them uh, correctly, that nothing's too loud or too soft. And then you also have acoustical engineers and they work with architects to help design buildings. So maybe they need a soundproof room for recording purposes, for recording uh, music. So you have to make sure that there is very minimal um, echoing in a room. So that's something somebody could work on. Um, auditoriums. So at school, if you've ever been to your auditorium for an assembly, it's very, it echoes a lot in there. So people have to try and either reduce the echoes or maybe they want it to be echoey. It depends. Concert halls, meeting areas, anything like that. So there's lots of different pathways you can take that have to do with sound. It could be in the health healthcare field with um, auditory disorders or something as um, complicated as en engineering music. So lots of different things you can do with sound. But this is a fun experiment. So I hope you you know you have fun making making some music with your straws and water. Have fun.